today we're at the Duke of Cambridge with Geeti. Uh, Geeti, tell us who you are and what you do. Oh, well, I'm Geeti Singh and um, I founded this pub, which is an organic pub in Islington. It's the first and only organic pub in the world and we opened in 1998. Um, the Duke is now part of Riverford. Uh, I married Guy Watson, ah. who owns Riverford, so we merged our businesses together. It couldn't have been a better marriage of businesses <laughs> it's, and marriage. It's perfect. <laughs> Um, so how did it all come about? Did you know that you wanted to own an organic pub when you were younger? I grew up in a commune in the Midlands and we were self-sufficient. We grew everything organically and, and we um, thought about the politics and the ethics behind everything that we were buying and doing. So yeah. it was very much a politically driven household. Yeah. I spent my childhood on Greenham Common and travelling to demos and... It was fantastic. And we drank um, fair trade tea and coffee when it was utterly disgusting. Uh, and I used yeah. to... <laughs> <laughs> it used to be. Now it's yeah, great. Yeah, now it's but, yeah. great. But back then, how many yeah. years ago? 40 years ago. It really was pretty gross. And you, you bought it from Oxfam. I used to have sneaky cups of guilty Nest Cafe at my friends' houses and think it was wonderful. <laughs> you rebel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. um, so that, that gave me the, the values for life. Mm. And I, I started... Um, Life wanting to be an opera singer, and went to Birmingham Conservatoire, had a lovely time and quit after a year, so mm. obviously not that much fun. And I came up to London, started working in restaurants and loved it in yeah. a way that I didn't love singing. Uh, but I was really shocked by the lack of sustainability. I couldn't yeah. believe that people were paying the kind of prices they were paying for basically appalling ingredients. Yeah. There was no provenance, there was no thought gone into it. There was no minimum wage. The people weren't, I was often not paid at all. You relied entirely on your tips. Mm. Certainly no holiday or sick pay. Mm. And I watched these restaurateurs driving around in their Porsches and just thinking this is wrong on so many levels and I know it can be done differently. And then I came across the Eagle, first gastro pub, and decided that's what I wanted to do, combine my values yeah. with the, the, a really fantastic quality food and drink in a pub environment. Yeah. So that was exactly what I wanted to do. Yeah. I wanted people to come and have a great meal and enjoy it and not necessarily notice that it was organic and there were yeah. all the ethics behind it. So growing up in the commune, did, were you aware that it was quite a special and unique environment that not everybody else necessarily experienced? Or did you feel like it was quite normal and maybe you weren't aware of it until you moved to London? I totally got that we were actually in a sort of separate society yeah. I did understand that but I, I didn't really understand the impact that was having on me and it would have on my future life until I left yeah. so I went to the local primary in the local comprehensive school and the kids at the primary school no one would ever come home with me they were and <laughs> free <some> veg them, <laughs> 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 I didn't really eat veg. so I used to have raw mushroom sandwiches in homemade you, brown yeah. bread at school no one's and, gonna pin your lunches <laughs> no, Exactly. My friends would have Dairy Lee on Mother's Pride <laughs> and I would just, yeah, I really wanted Dairy Lee on Mother's Pride oh, and I so did. wanted white socks and pretty dresses but I had long patch <laughs> skirts and, you know, my mum used to make sandals out of car tyres and bits of really? old leather. Yeah, you She's know, still it was... on trend now though, that's the thing, like little that she knows, she was way ahead of the game. <laughs> so between primary and secondary I had a kind of a big turnaround. I, um, I think I, I shaved my legs and and wax my moustache and decided that I, would, I was going to be different at You're going to be fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. None of this shit was going to get me down anymore. On the first day at school, I think somebody called me some, you know, deeply offensive name and I, I punched him. I, I really didn't mean to, yeah. but um, split his lip. And from then on, I had a reputation as being the hardest girl in <laughs> no. school. It was absolutely brilliant. Because I think he was a few years ahead of, of, oh, really? above me. Yeah. So, you know, it really was a major achievement. And then I decided to take this reputation and, and run with um, uh, kind of sort of being a, a, a superhero. So oh, I, awesome. I rescued everybody and also, so anyone else who's been bullied, I'll yeah. be right in there. But I also um, tried to instill a, a political uh, belief in everyone that I could come yeah. across. So I spent a lot of time fighting our cause. Yes. So I was bullied quite a lot at primary school, you know, in a, in a way that kind of didn't matter because I lived in this wonderful society yeah. that, that was constantly affirming our beliefs. Yeah. And it wasn't just my parents saying, don't worry, dear, you know, this is what we mm. think. It was a whole group of people really giving me the ammunition to, be, to have strength in what we were trying to yeah. do politically and morally and ethically. 
being organic is actually quite on trend at the moment. I think more and more people are becoming aware of it. And obviously it was very different when you started out with the Duke. Um, how, what challenges have you come ac across or what changes have you seen over the last 18 years? Mm. The change in people's um, knowledge of organic is really phenomenal. Yeah. And um, the change in uh, people's assumptions about who eats organic is quite huge. Yeah. So, um, I, I remember w when we first opened, my whole purpose was that people would come in and just enjoy it, but the, mm. because I knew that organic would scare them off a bit, they would absolutely assume that it was vegetarian bean sprouts, and I yeah, can't tell yeah. you how often people would ask that. It was really, so do you serve meat? You know, it was really <laughs> extraordinary, amazed yeah. them that it was possible. And journalists, I remember one journalist in the Independent doing a really lovely review, but her, her main criticism was that no one wore lipstick here. And I mean, you know, what? And I, I used to go around looking, I suddenly started kind of researching how yeah. many people wore lipstick, and really people didn't very much then. I mean, Scarily actually wasn't lipstick for the table for people <laughs> to pay for the So people just didn't. But trying to be quiet about the fact we were organic, the, the hardest thing was beers, and all our bar oh, drinks, actually, because there really were very few then. Yeah. I persuaded, um, Freedom, St. Peter's and Pitfield breweries all to get certified for us. So I created the organic beer market. Thank that. you very much. That's awesome. <laughs> it is great, isn't it? <laughs> Thank yeah, you, letters in the post. That. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. But we used, but people used to walk in and they'd come up to the bar and I'd say pint of freedom because if I didn't yeah. sell five barrels a week, I think it was, oh. but you know, I was in trouble because yeah. I had made them brew it all for us. Um, so at that point, I'd have to start explaining about the beer. And what was really interesting was here, people loved that they were independent London-based yeah. brewers. Um, and I opened three pubs in three years at one point. And the, and the one in West London, where organic was really trendy yeah. because it was on trend, mm -hmm. people didn't like it at all. Oh, really? They, they wanted just the odd thing. You know, they just yeah. wanted to punctuate their day with a bit of organic, but ultimately they wanted Stella and Guinness, yeah. which was... Things Very depressing, yeah. Brands, it was yeah, all about yeah. brands. Who are your inspirations? Well, I mean, my upbringing was my biggest inspiration. Yeah. All the people I grew up with in the commune who were um, utterly radical and trying to prove that life could be led in a different way. Um, but from a business point of view, Anita Roddick was absolutely my hero. And um, I actually met her for half an hour before I opened this place. Oh, wow. Had I just opened it? I think maybe I'd opened it. That's right, and I wanted to expand. My mum went to see her do a talk and went up to her afterwards and said, my daughter really liked to speak to you. And Anita said, no problem, here's my number, get her to call me, which was really darling. And I went and spent half an hour with her and just picked her brains and she was, she was so brilliant and so inspirational. I didn't follow her advice, and if I had, <laughs> her advice was don't expand. Her advice was stay as your business yeah. and, and do really powerful stuff from yeah. there. The, the more you expand, the harder it is to um, be a grassroots changer of opinion yeah. because you get so wrapped up in yes, running yeah. the business. And she was absolutely right. So I, I rolled out to three pubs very, very fast in three years and very, and very quickly came back to the one because I did lose track of what I really yeah. loved doing, which was engaging my staff, engaging with my customers and, and working. I then started to do the stuff she was talking yeah. about, started working in the local community, working with the local schools and trying to um, just have a greater influence politically from this site. When you started out with the Duke, did you have a set of um, values or ethics that you wanted to meet and do you feel that now you've reached those or ticked every box? No, I absolutely had a very clear idea of what I wanted to do and a very, I, I'd created um, a, a, not a mission statement but a, a set of values that yeah. I was determined to follow and I couldn't do it all straight away partly because the facilities weren't necessarily there so, yeah. for, so um, having a purely organic bar was very hard and one of the biggest ones was trying to procure vegetables from Britain yeah. so I used to have to buy from all over Europe and as, as time went on and the market got bigger it shrunk and shrunk and shrunk and just before um, we went over to Riverford we were buying vegetables only from the periphery oh, of London yeah. which was really fantastic but not necessarily the most environmentally sound way to do it no. because the modes of transport 
transport can, can be pretty yeah, shabby. Yeah. There's little farmers in <laughs> yeah. their tractors delivering their yeah. box of veg isn't very Going ecologically the full 30 miles sound. an hour down the road. No. <laughs> um, but so, you know, I was very clear. I wanted it to be absolutely had to be organic, mm -hmm. um, fair trade in anything that we were procuring yeah. from abroad. Um, and that uh, we recycled and reused wherever possible. I thought about it right through to tables and the toilet paper we were using and the really? hand soap we were using. You know, everything had to have had, I thought through where it was coming from. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, we achieved it all uh, very quickly, very possible. Yeah. And more to the point, and absolutely what I wanted to prove, that it was profitable. Yes. So I broke even in month four, and in year one I turned a profit, enough money to open my second site, of which I sold a few years later, the yeah. other two sites, so it's, it's only the due now. Um, but, you know, I proved yeah. absolutely that there was no reason why you shouldn't pay your staff well, give them contracts, which I gave them, yeah. they had a, a agreed minimum wage, I gave them contracts, they had holiday and sick pay, which no one else was doing in the restaurant yeah. industry, or very few people, and I was procuring everything as ethically as I possibly could, and we were making money. <laughs> and so there. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant there, and it's amazing that, yeah, 18 years on, it's still going strong, and, mm, yes. and more and more people are discovering it and loving it, and yeah. yeah, for whatever reason they come in through the door, I hope they've sort of had their eyes open to a little bit of organic. But my, my lifestyle at home follows all the principles that yeah. I apply here. And it's, I, I, couldn't, um, I couldn't run the business in a different way. I wouldn't want to do yeah. it, I wouldn't enjoy it. And I couldn't live my life in a different way. Uh, to, to know that um, every step you're taking, you are trying to improve society and the environment for everyone. Yeah. I don't know, it sounds so pious, but it just makes life more pleasurable. It just feels okay. Yeah, it's you know, nice when, when you feel like you're living your values, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. I am quite a consumer, but, but it's vintage crockery and it's vintage clothes or it's ethical clothes, yeah. you know, where, you, where I know that, that um, I'm having a positive effect on someone else's life yes. by doing that. It's really wonderful. Mm. But actually, you as an individual, if you just act out your life in the way that you believe it should be, you can change, we can all change yeah. the world, society, just like that, overnight. Yeah. But gaining that knowledge is quite huge. And I was mm. privileged to, to have had it all the way through my life. It was just my indoctrination. Yeah, That's just, uh, what I knew. So it was very easy for me. Opening this was very easy. And knowing each step to take, and know, yeah. I knew where to buy fair trade coffee. I knew um, where to buy, um, all our dry store goods, yeah. so all our olive oils, and, and actually we use the same suppliers that we used in the commune. I've been buying off Essential and Community since I was born. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, that's quite that. lovely. It's really <laughs> lovely. Um, so for anyone who's looking to get into a bit of sustainability or maybe just thinking about taking the first few steps, do you have any favourite tips? So I would start with buying organic mm -hmm. because uh, it has full traceability and the, and the certifying bodies have done all the work for you. That's a really simple yeah. step. So trying to find a, a go to a farmer's market and interrogate a meat supplier about how they're producing their animals is, is just a minefield. Yeah. So just buy organic and then you you it's yeah. done for you. And the same with fair trade. Very simple. And certification, I think, is very important. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks so much for letting us have a little chat. I absolutely love the Duke. If you're ever in London, then pop up here and grab some grub because it's really delicious. Um, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe, like, and why not watch another video? See you soon.